Hey guys, it's me, Missy Briggs. I wanted to take a few minutes and go over my getting started guide. <clears throat> this is available um, completely 100% for free. And um, I have on here some early practicing for people that are interested in learning brush lettering. Um, it's a good way to get started. Um, like I said, it's available completely for free. Sorry if you hear snoring, it's my dog. Um, all you have to do is go to tinyurl.com slash learn calligraphy. Um, you can also get to it um, on my website and other tips on my website, missybriggs.com. Um, and that is my Instagram handle at MTB Studio. Maybe you got to this video um, that way. So anyway, what we go over in this getting started guide is some tips, tricks, um, a little shopping list if you're interested in starting brush calligraphy um, and also a practice guide and also some blank guide sheets that go over these basic strokes so maybe you've heard of these before these are some strokes that you use when you're practicing to build that muscle memory to um, get ready to make real letter forms. If you look at um, some of the letter forms, they're just, especially the lowercase letters, they're made using these simple shapes. So in other words, something like this, that underturn connected with um, an oval, an oval plus that underturn, you put those together and you have a letter A. Um, so I'm going to go over my sheets really quick. I'm not going to do a complete practice of all these strokes, but I wanted you to get a feel for how to use them, um, why some of them are printed backwards. Um, I have another YouTube video where I'm writing backwards and I had a couple really critical comments, which I love that, um, saying, why do we have to write backwards? Well, you don't. Um, the idea is I've done some of these backwards because as a lefty, if you're left-handed like me, um, and you're practicing something for the first time, you know, maybe you want to see the example and then see your work as you're going along. Now, if that bothers you, you're really not used to going that way. It's not a big deal. Just an option. I have it, obviously, the other way. When I show you today, I'm gonna to use the other one so you can see me writing. Otherwise, as I go, I kind of cover it up with my hand. And that's not helpful for when you are learning. So, like I said, I have a, a little bit of information, a primer on getting started, and then we get right into these sheets. So what I recommend you do is um, download them, print them out on a nice smooth sheet of paper, but you're not actually gonna practice on this paper. What you're gonna do is practice on um, a sheet of tracing paper or um, marker paper placed over top. Pardon my sound. Um, and with these sheets, they're made to be used with a variety of different um, large brush pens. So you could use something like this. This is a Pentel Aquash. Um, brush pen, you could use this, either fill it with ink, um, just fill it with water, dip it in watercolor, and you could practice this way. Um, also the pencil color brush would work for this. I'm just gonna do a couple so you can see. This is a nylon tip brush. It's more like a real paintbrush. The bristles are more like a real paintbrush. You could also use something like this, the Tombow Dual Brush. It's got that spongy tip. And that would work. I'm trying to go quickly. I realize these aren't lining up super nicely. You could also use something like this, the Koi Coloring Brush. And that also has that spongy tip a marker and again I'm going backwards just so you can see I don't normally practice backwards I don't normally write backwards um, but because I've taught myself 
how to do it this way and not really understanding the difference between how a lefty does it and how a right-handed person does it, I am able to go backwards and forwards. Um, and then if you wanted watercolor or um, ink and something like a number two round brush would be really great for practice as well. So these sheets work for um, any of these. I'm not gonna start breaking out the paint right now. Okay, we're gonna switch views so you can get an even closer look at um, one of these and how we're gonna use the brush pen to make these shapes. Um, I'm showing you with this because it has a longer spongy tip so you can tell. Um, the idea is when you're making these um, thin upstrokes, you're not using the very end of it. You wanna use towards the end, kind of right along there. And as a lefty, you're gonna gently glide it upwards if you're right-handed. Of course, it's more of a, the angle on this, it's more of a pulling motion. And for a left-handed person, it is a pushing motion, which is why we probably require even more practice with this thin, gentle upstroke. Now the good thing about the tracing paper is, you know, we're really not wasting any room. If you wanted to even practice in between to fill it up, slide it down, use all this space on top, you can absolutely do so. But the idea with these worksheets is to work from left to right, go all the way across, and practice making consistent shapes. And practice spacing them out evenly. As I'm speaking to you, I have a harder time doing that myself. But that's the idea is you want consistently sized shapes with consistent um, distance between them. So for that one, it's a thin, very gentle upstroke. Now as a lefty, when I'm working on that downstroke, I'm gonna put the pressure on it. And something like this can definitely take a lot of pressure. So as you place it down, ready, down, 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 and you would continue that all the way across. Um, if you're working with something more like a paintbrush, you have even more flexibility in this tip. You could make a thinner downstroke or something thicker, which leaves you room to create letter forms ultimately that are of multiple sizes. Um, because you could just as easily create a smaller little letter A or an even bigger one. Oops. Um, but for now, we're really gonna talk about the spongy tipped brush because it's easier to show you sort of the anatomy of it and just some basic practice on how much pressure you're gonna put on it. Um, which when you're getting started, that's what you're really focusing on. How much pressure do I need to use in order to create these marks? So again, quickly, we've got the upstroke, which we're not using the very tip edge of it. We're kind of using on the side. The downstroke, which we're making a little more pressure and pulling downward. The next one, and this is on another sheet, but I'll just continue here, is the overturn stroke. And this is like a letter M 
for a letter N. That's combining the first two in underturn strokes. So think W's and U's. Pressure, release, and up. A compound curve, which would be a connection or really the second part of a letter N. An oval, which you start with a light pressure, immediately transition to a heavier pressure. And like the compound curve, you're returning to a light pressure. So it's a light pressure, a heavier pressure, and then a light pressure. And we start right around here, around this one o'clock area, if we were talking about a clock. I'll just slide this over a little bit. And now a C shape. And then the reverse of that. An ascending loop. Think a letter L. A descending loop. And was that it, Lauren? I think I got them all. Um, so, okay, I'm going to give you a very close up view so you can really see how this brush pen is moving on these basic strokes. And also the funny way which I hold my pen, and also a nice view of the um, dog on my nail, I guess. Okay, so it is the entrance stroke or upstroke is that. So it wasn't on the edge. I was near the edge, but not on the edge. Okay, the full pressure stroke. See, I was putting pressure on that. Okay, an overturn. So let me move the paper over so you can see. An underturn. You really release the pressure on that upstroke. A compound curve. An oval. A C curve. And the reverse. An ascending loop. And the descending loop. Now you're going to run into different problems making all of these. But um, you're going to find that you're not able to have as thick or as thin a line as you want. Just remember all of this is going to come with practice. Um, the looks of it, the feel for it, the transition from thick to thin, all of that is going to come as you continually practice. So these are just some considerations when you get started practicing. Again, um, I also include um, completely blank sheets that you can print over and over and over again. You can practice these in any sort of order that you'd like. You can practice all ovals, 
or you can practice ovals connected with the underturns and make a whole row of letter A's. You can practice rows of um, compound curves. any which way you would like to go um, with the completely blank sheets. Um, the other ones are for direction, for your direction. They have um, a couple lines of direction in it to give you some hints. And again, this is for you completely for free. And if you have any questions, comments, leave them below, subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.